Hello, it's Catherine here. I hope you are all well. Today, I am going to talk to you about the NHS and what they do here in the UK. But what is the NHS? Well, the NHS stands for National Health Service. And when did this start? The NHS was introduced in 1948 by this man, Anuin Bevan, more commonly known as Lord Bevan or Nye Bevan. He was a politician from Wales and campaigned that people should be able to access healthcare for free when they needed it. But what did this mean? Well, the introduction of the NHS meant that the UK used money from tax to fund health care for everyone. So for the first time, people could access health care for free. This included going to the hospital or seeing a doctor or nurse, going to the opticians to check your eyes, a visit to the dentist. Medicines and the pharmacy were also included. So has the NHS changed at all since its beginning in 1948? Well, yes is the short answer. One of the first big changes happened in 1952. Until this point, all medicine had been free under the NHS. However, in 1952, charges for prescriptions were introduced. Prescriptions cost one shilling, which is in old money, no longer used here in the UK. One shilling would be around 50 pence in modern money. Almost 60 cents of a euro. Prescriptions have increased over time. And now the price of a prescription is nine pounds per item. Round about 10 euros. So do the NHS just treat illness? Well, no. One of the focuses of the NHS is to prevent illness rather than just to cure. And in 1958, this was clearly seen with the programme of vaccinations for polio and diphtheria. Nowadays, the NHS give out many vaccines to prevent lots of different types of illness. And hopefully, soon, we will be able to have a vaccine for the coronavirus, which the NHS will distribute. Here you can see the start of the vaccination programme for polio. Also, by pooling together the taxes of the country into one national health service, we've been able to engage in groundbreaking medical treatment. There's too many to share with you all, but here are some of the highlights. So, in 1960, there's the first kidney transplant in the UK. It took place between two identical twins that were 49 years old and from Edinburgh. In 1962, the first full hip replacement took place in Wigan at the Wrightington Hospital by Sir John Charlie. Now, many hip replacements take place 
by the NHS every year. In 1968, the first heart transplant was performed by Donald Ross at a hospital in London by Mr. Fred West. This was a very complicated operation. Here you can see Fred West in the picture in the middle. It is an operation that takes 18 hours and many doctors and nurses. The 1970s saw the introduction of lots of technology and modernisation. In 1971, the world's first CT scan was carried out in Wimbledon. But during the 70s, CT scans and MRI scanners were introduced. This enabled a closer look at the brain, which helped identification and diagnosis of many illnesses such as cancer or multiple cirrhosis. It also helped doctors to look at the damage caused by stroke and to greater understand this. 1978 was a very special year. The world's first IVF baby was born in Manchester and named Louise Joy Brown. Here you can see a picture of the world's first test tube baby and the very happy parents. Now over a million children are born in this way. Further groundbreaking treatments took place in the 80s and 1980 saw keyhole surgery used for the first time to remove a gallbladder. This development meant that there was less risk of infection as a large cut for surgery was not needed, making the treatment safer for patients. The NHS continued with its ideology of prevention rather than cure and in 1988 introduced a breast screening programme for women aged 50 plus to try and identify early problems to reduce breast cancer deaths within this age group. In 1994, the NHS Organ Donor Register was set up. This followed a five year campaign by parents, John and Rosemary Cox, and sister, Christine Cox, of the late Peter Cox, who sadly died young from cancer. However, he inspired his family to set up an organ donor register, which they came, campaigned hard to achieve. Nowadays, there are more than 25 million on the organ donor register in the UK. This represents 38% of the population. However, sadly, the demand for donors still outstrip the supply and people die every year waiting for donors to become available. Here in the picture you can see Peter's mum and sister proudly holding his photo. By 2018 6,613 deceased organ donors who were on the register enabled 18,000 transplants to take place by the NHS, saving many people's lives. Over time, the NHS has changed and modernised and in 1998, the NHS Direct was launched. This allowed patients to access health consultations over the telephone 
and via the internet. Something which at the moment is essential. Groundbreaking treatment with the NHS has continued past the millennium and in 2002 gene therapy was used for one of the first times in the world at the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. This new therapy was used to cure an 18 month old boy named Reese of a disease which affects his immune system, meaning that he needed to be kept inside in a sterile environment. Because of this, it was known as bubble boy disease, as he needed to be kept in a safe bubble. However, with this new treatment, Reese was able to go outside for the first time and have a normal life with his family. To my reckoning, Reese is now 19 years old and very healthy. Groundbreaking NHS treatment continued and in 2007 a revolutionary robotic arm was used at St Mary's Hospital in London. This was used to treat patients with fast or irregular heartbeats. The first patient to try this revolutionary treatment was Kenneth Crocker. Here you can see the doctor controlling the robotic arm with a remote control. This new treatment allowed for greater precision and accuracy. The NHS's aim of prevention rather than cure continued in 2009 with the introduction of the programme named Change for Life. This was a programme aimed at families to make healthy lifestyle choices such as changing sugary snacks for fruits or doing a little exercise every day. In 2011, the first man in the UK received a plastic heart. This is quite incredible. Matthew Green was on a waiting list for a donor for a new heart but there were none available. So he engaged in this new treatment to have a plastic heart. This allowed him to survive for two years until a donor became available. This plastic heart saved his life because he would not have been able to wait the two years until there was an appropriate donor. In 2012, Mark Cahill was the first person in the UK to receive a hand transplant at Leeds General Infirmary. And in 2018, we celebrated the birthday, the 70 year anniversary of the NHS. Sometimes it is easy for us to forget the amazing work that the NHS has done over the years and take for granted that here in the UK we are able to access healthcare for free.